Hi everyone, I'm Arbo Zir and welcome to a bit of a news video. So, as you might or might not know, the second Civilization 6 expansion was just announced yesterday. And it's coming out on February the 14th, 2019, obviously. And I figured I'll make a video to talk a little bit about it. There is both an official trailer and gameplay from yesterday's announcement livestream. I will link both in the video description below if you want to check them out. The gameplay is quite interesting. So one of the biggest new features in Gathering Storm are natural disasters, but far from the only one. And they include storms, several different types of storms, like dust storms in the desert, also flooding, droughts and volcanic activity. And in fact, we can see a volcano right here on the screenshot. Two volcanoes, in fact. And as an interesting side note, Terrain features like volcanoes, mountain ranges or rivers will now get their own names, which will be taken from the poll of like hundreds of names. And they will be named appropriately depending on what sieves settle close to these features, if possible. So for example, if you settle next to a river as Egypt, that will be the Nile River, as the most obvious example, I suppose. Anyway, back to disasters. There's actually a whole system now involving global temperature levels and global CO2 levels. And I can actually show you the world climate screen from the live stream. There it is. There's quite a lot going on in here, as you can see. And the disasters will have risk and reward involved. That's basically your motivation to settle in an area that's being threatened by disasters. Because some areas will be more dangerous than others. You can settle in an area that's at risk of being flooded, for example. But why would you do that? You can do that because once the area gets flooded, you will get bonuses to your tiles. And that's actually one of the new systems in Civ 6. The tile yields will now be dynamic. So that's how you get floodplains now. Floodplains are not static. Floodplains are now affected by flooding. That's how they are created in Civ 6. So that could be your reason for settling in an area that's at risk of having disasters. And the same mechanic applies to volcanoes, for example. You will also get risk and reward with volcanoes, with all natural disasters. That's basically their main function, their main gameplay function. And I'm quite interested in seeing how that's going to work out. And there's more involved with disasters, because there is now World Congress, and it's a little bit expanded compared to C5. Because on top of regular sessions, which will happen every 30 turns on standard, you can call an emergency session, for example, to address a natural disaster that just happened. You can do that. And there's a whole new feature, diplomatic favor, that's actually a new abstracted resource that will be added in Gathering Storm. And it will also tie in to Diplomatic Victory, which will now be in game as well. And I'm actually quite interested in seeing how the AI will interact with this system. Because what you can do is help other thieves to gain Diplomatic Favor and then you can use it. Because Diplomatic Favor is how you get votes in the World Congress. So what I want to see is how much the AIs will prioritize interacting with that system. Because in order to gain a diplomatic favor, you have to play nice, at least to some extent. So that could make diplomacy in Civ 6 a lot more interesting than it's been so far. I think that's the number one thing I'm interested in seeing in practice from a gameplay perspective. How the diplomatic favor and the World Congress system will affect the AI behavior. But we'll see about that. Anyway, disasters. So there's also an advanced option. There's going to be an advanced option before you start the game where you can control how often natural disasters will occur. And at its most extreme setting, you will supposedly get natural disasters like every turn or two. So that could be quite exciting. <laughs> I'm probably going to play with that, because that sounds hilarious. Anyway, another big thing 
is a whole new era, future era, which will also be partially randomized. I thought that was quite interesting. So you will not know what exact tags are connected and how in the future era when you start playing until you get there and actually start discovering these tags. That's supposed to represent the uncertainty of how things will evolve in the next 50 years. So that could be quite interesting. And there's a lot in the future era that Firaxis hasn't talked about yet. There will definitely be three new government types that was teased during the announcement live stream, but we don't know what these government types will be exactly. I'm guessing they will tie in with various victory conditions. And speaking of victory conditions, from what the developers said during the announcement live stream, all the victory conditions were looked at and changed in some ways. So there aren't any details just yet, but supposedly every victory condition was looked at and changed to some extent at least. So I'm quite interested in seeing that. And there are a lot of smaller changes. Like for example, there's a canal district now, which is mentioned right here on the page I'm looking at right now. And there's actually an achievement to build like a seven tile canal, which is quite impressive. A seven tile canal. Can you imagine that? That's a pretty damn big canal. However, that's not the only engineering project because that's also a whole new system in Gathering Storm. So as we can see here, there will also be mountain tunnels and railroads. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing a list of all of that. And other than that, the strategic resources will be completely overhauled. So now the units that require strategic resources might require either an upfront investment in strategic resources, like if you recruit a swordsman, he needs iron for the sword, but once he has his sword, you don't need iron anymore. But for late game units, like tanks for example, they will require upkeep in fuel, because they can't do much without fuel. So there are two different ways how units will require strategic resources now. And you will be able to stockpile them. That's one of the biggest changes. The coastal cities will have like an actual harbor where ships can dock. There are a lot of smaller changes like that. I can't possibly mention all of them. And another change which I'm personally quite excited about are the changes to the warmonger system. And as we can see right here, the warmonger score is replaced with grievances. And this acts as a tug of war between a pair of players. If you've ever been at the receiving end of a surprise attack and retaliated by taking a few cities, I think you'll appreciate how the system has been updated. So one of the biggest changes is that when someone attacks you and then you retaliate by taking his city, for example, others might see it as a reasonable response. It's literally mentioned right here. So I'm quite excited about that part. You probably won't be able to go overboard with that, but just the fact it might be considered as an appropriate response is quite nice. And honestly, I've never been a huge fan of the Warmonger system, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the Grievances system will work. It sounds better on paper, we'll see how it's going to work out in practice. There are a few other things, so your cities will now require electricity, which means you will have to generate power for them, and you will have to burn coal or oil for example, which in turn will interact with the global temperature and the global CO2 level system. And then other leaders might want to do something about that. If you start burning too much coal for example, and you start affecting the climate a little bit too much, maybe you are a landlocked empire, for example, and you want to affect the global climate, to flood the coastal areas. But then the thieves that are on the coastal areas might want to stop you from the World Congress, for example. It all sounds pretty interesting. It does sound really good on paper. I'm curious how it will all work out in practice, but we'll have to wait a little bit for that. Well, in any case, I think that covers all the biggest changes. Again, if you want to check out this page that I'm looking at right now, or the announcement live stream, or the trailer, I will link all of that in the video description. As for what I think about the announcement in general, 
or they're done what I said already. One of the things that was not touched at all during the announcement live stream is modding. Because I would really like to see Civ 6 open up to modding a little bit more. At least to the same extent Civ 5 was open. Because right now DLL mods are just impossible in Civ 6. That's not a thing that you can do at all. And a lot of the more extensive Civ 5 mods require DLL mods. Like they wouldn't function without them at all. So I really hope Civ 6 will get opened up to modding a little bit more than it is right now. Other than that, for me personally, the number one thing I want to see is how the AI will interact with all these new systems. Like, for example, it sounds like you will have new things to consider when deciding where exactly to settle your cities. But will the AI consider that at all? Because we all know that AI settles some really terrible cities sometimes. So I'm not totally convinced it will be able to take advantage of that. But it's a really interesting system for the player, obviously. And then there's the whole diplomatic favor system. Now that could solve a lot, if not most, of my complaints about the current state of diplomacy in Civ 6. It could. If the AI will interact with the diplomatic favor system in a logical way, and play nicer to gain diplomatic favor to then use it in the World Congress, that could make for really interesting and engaging diplomacy. But whether that's going to happen or not, well, that remains to be seen. I do hope so, because I would really like to see that. Right now, in my opinion, diplomacy in Civ 5 is more interesting than diplomacy in Civ 6. At least that's how I see it currently. I mean, when you play Civ 6 on data, you can basically ignore the AIs. You can't really say the same about Civ 5. All you really have to do right now, with the current expansion, is pick one or two AIs. I'm talking about Civ 6. Get alliances with them. And then you don't really have to care about anyone else. You can't really say that about Civ 5. If you play on data in Civ 5, you can't just ignore the AIs, because you will have a bad time if you do that. So, I'm hoping that all these changes will lead to a much more interesting system, where you will not be able to play and just really not give a crap about other leaders. But again, we'll see. We'll have to wait a little bit longer to see how that's going to work. But I have to say, I am actually quite impressed with how many new features there are in here. I probably didn't mention a lot of the smaller ones, because there are a lot of small improvements. Like, the developers talked about some of them during the announcement livestream, which again will be linked in video description, but there will also be a lot more still. A lot of things were not talked about at all, like the details of the electricity system. I'm quite interested in that. Well, in any case, I think that concludes this video. Let me know what you think about Gathering Storm. Because, historically, the second expansion is what really made Civ good. That was the case with Civ 4, and Beyond the Sword, that was the case with Civ 5, with Brave New World. Will that be the case with Civ 6 and Gathering Storm? I certainly hope so. I really do hope so. I mean, it's not a huge secret that I personally currently prefer Civ 5, when we're talking about the current iteration of Civ 5 versus the current state of Civ 6. Like, I'm not comparing something that's not out yet, I'm comparing the game as it exists right now. But that's partially because of the mods that exist for Civ 5, like Vox Populi. Nothing like that will exist for Civ 6 anytime soon. And Vox Populi addresses the AI, for example, in a major way. It's still a little bit stupid in some cases, but it's high of a lot better than vanilla Civ 5 AI. So I do hope that Gathering Storm will live up to the expectations, and I think anyone who's been following the Civ franchise for a long time expects the second expansion to make Civ really, really good. I hope that will be the case. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, that's going to be it. If you want to hang out and chat, I'm always around on my Discord at discord.gg slash marvelzir, so you can catch me there. I'm actually there a lot. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too much sometimes. <laughs> But in any case, that's it for this video, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.